Hello and welcome to our service for the 30th of July. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. And a gathering prayer. Lord God, we leave worldly thoughts and preoccupations behind and gather to seek your wisdom. Teach us kingdom values, we pray, so that we may grow in faith this day and always. Amen. And our invitation to confession. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And just a moment for reflection. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let's take a moment to pray for peace for ourselves, our family and friends, our communities and the world. And so we come <coughs> to our readings. And our first reading is from 1 Kings 3 verses 5 to 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading from Matthew 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up onto the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. So in that Matthew reading just now, we heard some quick-fire parables where the kingdom of God is compared to several things, a mustard seed, which is transformed into a huge tree, yeast, which is mixed with flour and transforms it into bread, hidden treasure, a fine pearl, a net full of fish. The yeast is hidden amongst the flour, but permeates it and changes it into something more useful. Just so is God's kingdom among us, brought in by Jesus as he died for us and for our sins, and working its way through the world, which is often unaware of it, working to transform the world and fill it with God's presence and his love. The kingdom is also like a treasure which is worth working hard for, or selling all we have to buy the field where it lies. The man who finds the treasure in the field discovers it by accident, just as some people come to faith without knowing that that's what they needed. The pearl merchant is actively seeking, just as some people are exploring different faiths and different aspects of spirituality. The merchant is an expert and is able to identify this pearl amongst lots of others as having something special about it, its size, shape, colour, luster and origin coming together to mark it out as very valuable. He is used to assessing special stones and working out their potential profit and is probably good at negotiating the price he wants too. Something about this pearl is very special indeed and this merchant goes off and sells everything, land, property, possessions, in order to buy it. He must have been very sure it was worth it. These two bits of the parable, dealing with buried treasure and a perfect pearl, tell us how valuable the kingdom of God is. And of course, this is the case. The kingdom is the difference between life and death, the difference between an empty existence and a full life with the knowledge of an eternity with Christ to come. How much do we invest in order to lead the kingdom life? Has being a Christian changed our lifestyle a little bit, a great deal, completely? How do we invest our own time, money and other gifts? In purchasing pearls of great price or do we fritter them away? What would make us give up everything we have? We can do it. 
We will all know people who have changed their lifestyle in order to promote or preserve good health. Maybe giving up smoking, going on a diet, exercising. Maybe we have done this ourselves. If the doctor says our health is at risk, we can discover amounts of willpower we never knew we had. Some of us will have given up time in our lives to do further study after school, often living on not very much at all or having to run up debts in order to gain qualifications and get a better job in the long term. How much more time and effort should we put into advancing the kingdom of God? Like the efforts made by the people who sold all they had to invest in treasure, it is worth striving to be part of the kingdom of heaven. It is worth giving up things for. And when someone becomes part of the kingdom of heaven, it is really worth celebrating. Where do we see the kingdom today? Perhaps in the life of the church and in fellowship with other Christians, maybe in the beauty of creation, maybe in the knowledge of God's goodness towards us. Do we strive after it? Do we seek to stay in it and live the kingdom life? Are we single-minded in pursuit of it? Or are we sometimes rather easily distracted and forget that we are part of God's kingdom and have work to do spreading God's word? We need to work at keeping spiritually fit, regularly exercising our Bible reading and praying muscles, attending events, listening to what our coaches say, growing in spiritual strength and power. We need to live as though the earth is ruled by God and Jesus, even while we are waiting for the final arrival and transformation of the earth into heaven. The kingdom of God is with us now, but as we read in verses 48 to 50, the final judgment has not yet happened. So we can respond to God in the here and now, but we also need to persevere. This means we have time to work on ourselves and to work on other people, but we do not know how much time we have until Jesus puts his net over the side of the boat and decides what sort of fish we are. Tom Wright explains that the possibility of the kingdom of God prevailing on earth was brought about by Jesus' death and resurrection, but that we are still waiting for the full outworking of these events. It is like people in the early morning, knowing the sun has risen, but having to wait until midday for its full radiance to shine forth. Jesus asks at the end whether his hearers have understood what he has been telling them. They politely answer, yes, as it would be difficult to say, well, actually, Gov, not a word, or could you just go back over that bit where maybe they did understand and maybe they didn't. They possibly thought that Jesus being on earth with them meant the kingdom of God was there and that at some point in their lifetimes the world would end and become heaven. They did not necessarily understand that sin had to be sorted out and how that would happen before the kingdom could really start to operate. However, by the time Matthew wrote all this down, Jesus had died and risen again. So the early Christians had worked things out a little more in all probability. Jesus says to his disciples that they need to understand the old as well as the new, which he is telling them about. He is the Messiah who was foretold through scripture, but has come with new truths. So there is old treasure but also new treasure. We have to build on our past lives, but make ourselves better Christians all the time to be new treasure and of value to God and our fellow man. A prayer to end. Loving God, thank you for your reign breaking in all around for those with eyes to see. May the light of your love be focused within us May we create space in our hearts to treasure it, and may we be of service to your love now and always. Amen. And we affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we come to our prayers. Almighty God, we are but one minute speck in your created order, but you care for each of us and for all those for whom we bring our prayers now. Bless those surrounded by war, violence and upheaval, living in derelict and destroyed areas that were once comfortable places to live. Bless them in their distress, in their pain, in their loss and confusion. Bless them in their searching for new ways, new hopes, new dreams, new homes. We remember particularly refugees fleeing Ukraine, Syria, Yemen, Sudan and other places where there is conflict and unrest. Bless those who live with divisions based on race, religion or ethnicity. People who are segregated for their faith, tortured for their faith cast adrift because of their faith, unfairly be treated because of their faith. People who stand out from the crowd and are discriminated against because of their ethnicity. We remember especially this week Israel and the Holy Land and all its strife and the Manipur region of India. Bless those families who will struggle to cope during the summer holidays those struggling to feed their families without extra school support, those who struggle with lack of indoor space and who have little outdoor space for children to play. Bless those people who have had poor experience of being parented and all who are trying to parent well in difficult circumstances. Bless those living in the midst of the effects of climate change Excessive heat and flooded lands, wildfires, landslides, desert. We remember especially the people of Rhodes and all the Mediterranean countries affected by fire as they battle the flames and face loss of livelihoods. We thank you for those who have been so kind to tourists from our country and other countries. May we all seek to find a way to live more fairly and sustainably, even if it means some sacrifices for the sake of this generation and the generations to come. Bless those in pain and anguish, physical and mental, and those who care for them. In a moment of stillness, we offer our unspoken prayers for ourselves and others, remembering especially Uggy, Richard Death, Mervyn, Claire, George, Pat Dingle, Siobhan, Michael Gawley, Joan Rowe, Pat Pedder, Peter Nobbs, Ron Crafer, and Karen C. and her family as they mourn the loss of her parents. Bless too those for whom life draws to an end. Give them peace, security and comfort. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today, the eighth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments that through your most mighty protection we may be preserved in body and soul. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And some notices. Um, a coffee morning with cake will take place at Tony and Sandra's 10 The Avenue from 10.30 on Saturday the 5th of August. And the following Saturday, the 12th of August, the Beaten Beans Music Day will be held at St James from 10.30 till 3 o'clock. Join us for a range of musical performance and refreshments all day. And thank you to everybody who helped or who came along to the Children's Society Afternoon Tea on Friday. £750 was raised for the Children's Society. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.